Hey folks, James Brandon here, and in this video I'm going to show you some of the presets that I've created for my uh, Lightroom 4 preset packs. These presets were created um, with the average photographer in mind that just wants to save some time in post-processing. I mean, that's what presets are for. They're one-click solutions for images, so you don't have to spend a whole lot of time creating a cool look for the photo. And uh, you can apply them to entire sets of photos if you want like a consistent look, or you can mix and match them, and it's just a lot of fun to go through and, and find that really good look for your photo. And it's, it's a lot of fun also because it's just, like I said before, it's just one click. You just throw these filters on, and a lot of times it's just going to look great right out of the box. And then there will be some other times where you'll throw the filter on and it's close to what you want, but you might have to just tweak it a little bit. And that's why I made each and every preset fully customizable. So you can throw it on there and then you can adjust it. You can bring back saturation, increase it, bring back details, uh, do anything you want. So I just wanted to go through um, some of the presets just to give you an example of what they can do. There's um, three different sets of presets. Over here on the left, you can see at the top here, so I've got landscape and travel presets, uh, monochrome or black and white presets, and then portrait presets. So let's just dive right in here. I have this image here that I took in uh, Morro Bay, and this is Morro Rock in California. So for this one, let's go over to our landscape and travel pack. And this was uh, taken at sunset, and this is a raw image. So if you've ever shot in RAW before, you know that it comes, you know, right out of the camera and it needs some work done to it because it's just a RAW file taken straight from the sensor of the camera. And then you have to take it into post and add detail, contrast, saturation, things like that to it. And the advantage, obviously, um, I could do a whole other video on that, but the advantage is that you have a lot more light and detail to play with um, as opposed to shooting JPEG where it's straight out of the camera and what you see is what you get basically. So um, anyways, with these presets over here, since this was taken at sunset, um, there is one that I created in here called Sunset Snap. And I created um, that preset with images like this in mind. So if you just click that once, it does this to the image. And if you hit backslash um, in Lightroom, you can see the before and after and that's just one click so maybe you thought this was a little bit over the line um, you wanted to bring it back a little bit again that's it's so easy you just come over here to the right side and let's say uh, we need to pull back the vibrance and the saturation a little bit um, the detail might be a little bit too far bring that back and then you can just kind of mess around with this and get it to where you want you can also just drag the histogram over and you just tweak it and just like that in no time at all I think that's where I'd probably want this image so um, after that I would go in and remove all these dust spots that's what happens when you uh, shoot at a high or a small aperture uh, this one was at f11 as you can see there so let's move on to something else we'll just go over here this is a little bit up the coast in California on the uh, highway um, the Pacific Coast Highway in Big Sur. And this was taken at night. I think this was a 30 second exposure. Yep, 30 seconds at f4.5. It was pretty much pitch dark outside. Uh, I had to shoot 30 seconds for my exposure to bring as much light as possible into the scene. But it obviously wasn't this bright at all in that image. So since it was dark and you know I'd kind of been driving and I missed blue hour, because I'd just been driving for so long trying to find a place to pull off. I took this and then um, there's a preset that will work really good with these darker images. And let's see here, that was called Night to Dusk. So it takes a dark image and brings some detail into the shadows and simulates blue hour. And you can see what that did with just one click. So that's, uh... oh, hit the wrong thing there. Uh, that is before and after. And again, if you wanted to bring it back, bring back the clarity, you could. Um, bring back the exposure, because that's bumped up a little bit, you could. And you just tweak the image slightly until you get it right where you want it. All right, uh, let's go on to some others. We'll start moving through these a little bit quicker. 
This is back to uh, Morro Bay, and this was taken earlier in the day. And let's say you see this scene and you kind of like the colors uh, in this lifeguard shack here. And when I saw this scene, before I even took the picture, I was instantly thinking it kind of looked vintage. So we can throw a vintage beach on here and see what that does. And there you go. I really like that one. Um, now we're going to go across the uh, pond to Italy. This is a an alleyway that I found in Venice. We can uh, see here that this preset was uh, created specifically for an image like this. Dark alley split tone. And that kind of just gives it a completely different look. So this is before and after. All right. Let's go over here to uh, Seattle. I took this image from atop the Space Needle. It was in broad daylight and um, you know, broad daylight sucks. It's not good. It's not good for taking photos. Nobody wants to shoot uh, landscape or travel photos in the middle of the day, but sometimes there's nothing you can do about it. You're there and you have your camera and you want to get some pictures. So for this one, um, a lot of images that I take in the middle of the day in post-processing, sometimes I'll try to uh, simulate sunset in the uh, final effect of the photo. So let's go over here and do daylight to sunset so one click and let's wait for that to load and here's the uh, the look of that so it kind of just gives it kind of an edge of day feel to it so let's move beyond these landscapes and go over to some portraits um, we'll get this one here of my son Isaac and he was uh, you know I think he was just a few weeks old when we took this. Um, first thing I'm going to do is hit R to bring up my crop tool. I'm going to bring this in a little tighter here. Probably right about there. It's looking good. Get his eye on that line there. All right, enter. And then we will collapse this, or rather uh, tuck it away there. And then we will expand the monochrome pack. And one of the filters that I really like on this image is the black and white film grain. because so it kind of just gives it a soft, timeless feel to it. And then it adds a lot of film grain, uh, which kind of just adds to the timelessness of the photo. So I really like that one there. Um, here's another photo. This is of my nephews. So we'll crop this as well. Bring it in, get rid of the flip-flop and the sidewalk back there. Hit enter. And let's go over to our portrait pack. And one of the ones that I created for this, I believe, was Summer Vacation. So this will just kind of, you know, I think it adds a little bit of cross-processing to it. Just very slight. You can see here in the highlights that the saturation was just brought up to 13 uh, for the highlights and it's kind of a yellow tone. So that boosts um, just the warmth and the vibrance of the skin tones. And um, then I increase the clarity and the contrast and the exposure just a little bit. So there's, there's not a whole lot going on here, but you can see that it makes a big difference in the before and after. So let's go on to this one over here. This is a bridal shot. And if you have a shot like this where there's a lot of greenery around, let's say you're in the woods or a forest or something like that, this one over here called Enchanted Forest will do the trick for you a lot of times. And I really like the way this came out. I sent the, the final image to the client um, just like this. And then I added one more little trick, uh, which I'll show you here real quick. I went into my gradients here. Um, we'll set this back to zero and then increase the temperature here. And then, since the sky was kind of blown out up here, I didn't really like it, I just grabbed this gradient and pulled it across here. And that just brought in some warmth from the uh, upper left-hand side, and it almost makes it look like the, the sun is back here just out of frame, so I really like that look there. So let's um, move on here. Here's a, just a portrait of a family. Uh, my wife actually took this. These are uh, some friends of ours that recently moved to uh, India, actually. And for this one, um, we used a cross-processed filter. 
And I don't do this a whole lot with portraits, but you know, I'll try to throw in a couple um, in a session. So I just really like the way this turned out with the skin tones and what cross processing does. Uh, I come down here again here to split toning, split toning and cross processing, basically the same thing. And what you're doing is you're adding warmth to your highlights in this case, and you're cooling down your shadows. And you'll see that in movies a lot. If you pay attention to movies like The Dark Knight or Inception, things like that, you'll really see that the skin tones are very warm and then the shadows are cooled down um, uh, quite a bit. And it just gives this really cool feel to it, almost a movie-like uh, tone. So I could show you the rest of these, but I think you pretty much get the picture. So these are just one-click presets. Again, they're, they're fully customizable and I really think you're gonna like them. So. Now let's go into how to get these presets into Lightroom. All right, so now I wanna show you how to get these presets into Lightroom. You'll see here over on the left that the uh, JB presets are no longer included. I removed them so I can just show you real quick how to add them back. So in Lightroom, all you have to do is go up to Lightroom and then Preferences. And then there's a little, um, on your presets panel here, there's a little section down here that says show Lightroom presets folder. So you're going to click that and it's going to bring up the folder that's hidden deep within your computer here. And then where Lightroom is highlighted, you'll come up here to develop presets. And here's where all of your folders are stored. So from here, what you want to do um, on, a, on a Mac, you would hit command N, which would bring up a new uh, finder window here. And when you download the presets, you'll get a zip folder. And when you unzip that folder, you'll get something like this. And you'll have an installation guide um, when you unzip it. And then you'll have each of the folders uh, for the presets. So all you have to do here is highlight one, um, hold down shift and highlight the last one there. And then you can just click this and drag it over and then drop them right into there. And that's all you have to do. So now we will go back to Lightroom and then quit. And we'll skip the backup for now. And click Lightroom again to open it back up here. And if we go back up to the top here on the left side, now you can see the presets are included. And that's the easiest way to get them into Lightroom. So if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoy the presets. See you later.